I had many pressing commitments, but then I have to come. Thank you, sir. We wanted to understand this. What is this racial discrimination at all? Uh, I'll start with the, what I faced when I was in U.S. There in Buffalo, I was having a long walk. And I was passing by a, a small colony or something. When I passed by, then uh, the two girls playing. From a distance, I could see that. When I reached there, there then the one, one said to the other, that I thought he's my father. So I look like them. So in the US, I look like a black. So I didn't uh, take it as a racial discrimination. I think that's okay. If they term me as one of them, that's not racial discrimination. So I'll come back to, because uh, one incident is around me. In Delhi, it's possibly figured in your slides also. 2014 it was, when I was the law minister of Delhi. So, I, as a minister of, as an area MLA, I keep meeting people. So, local people came to me on the 14th of January 2015 morning. Uh, 15. Yeah, 14. 14. 14, 14, 14. Yeah. I think that was. That could be around nine o'clock morning when I meet people. They came with this thick of papers, and they still told me that, sir, I have approached everybody. I have been to DCP, I have been to ACP, I have been to political party, uh, political leaders. Nobody could help us. I said, what is the problem? So the problem is that uh, in my area there is a drug menace, and there is a prostitution menace. I said, in my area. I said, I want to see it. So they said, they said they were not very hopeful of that I would do something. I said, no, no, no. In the evening when it happens, just give me a call. Just send me SMS. I came back from my office, secretariat, uh, around 10.30, 11 o'clock. In the night? In the night. Mm -hmm. The moment I reached, I got an SMS. And then uh, I told my... Uh, Two of my colleagues that come 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 with me in the car. I didn't have my dinner. I went in the car. En route, I met a, a PCR van. I told that fellow that uh, switch off all your lights and your siren. Come with me. So I took him along with me. I went to the site. There I saw a lot many cars parked. People are in. People are out. It's, this is called Sai Baba Mandir in Kirti Village. All BMWs and whatnot cars were all parked. So I got infuriated. I told the police, arrest all of them. And the police is walking as if it is their garden. They had that, you know, signing thing. They, at night, these police fellows, they wear the signing, so signing thing, the sign. So the headlights of the car uh, reflected on that, that stuff. And then uh, they all got elected. So they all, there was a kiosk running here and there. Then I told police that catch hold of somebody. So they succeeded to catch two of the South African uh, nationals. Women. Women. Mm -hmm. And then they make them, made them sit in the PCR van. And then the villagers got gathered and they said, Sir, there is something happening in that building. I told the police, go and raid the building. In the meantime, a lot of things happened. And a lot of chaos happened. At no point of time, none of us went to any building. None of us touched anybody. Meantime, a lot of police, police fellows arrived, but then they were, not, they were not agreeing to do anything to tackle this. One car arrived, in which there were four African women sitting. We asked the police guys that do a search. And the police sat in the car. It's recorded on the video. That there is a white stuff in the, in the hands of one of the, one of the women. She's trying to hide it somewhere. And then uh, the police fellow who had entered into the car, he took that stuff into his pocket. And then uh, he stepped, stepped out. It kept on happening. They said, we can't search, we can't do anything. 
we have no instruments, we have nothing to do. No, no warrant was for the raiding, they said. They said, we have no warrant to raid, so we can't raid. And they provided an easy escape for all of them to flee from the backside. They all flee from the backside. Finally, they were taken to Ames. They said, Ames can possibly have a measure to do a test. They were taken to Ames. In Ames, they did a test. The girls refused to undergo only a test. Two, only two caught. Four. Four. Four of them. Right? Four. In fact, the first two who got caught, mm. they refused to go to Ames. So they were taken to the police station. And then uh, from there, they didn't go to the go to Ames. In Ames, four girls who were in the car, mm. they were taken. All the boys had run away. All the, the African boys. All African boys had run away. The, when they, these four were taken to the Ames, they refused to undergo a test. They said, we can't go. We, can't, we will not go. There. We will not give you blood and whatever. So then I came back and I said that en route I had faced two cars parked like this, blocking my road. And there were um, black boys, South African uh, boys. And uh, before they could attack me, before they could proceed towards me, I maneuvered my vehicle and then say guarded myself. That was all happened on that night. Nobody entered into anybody's house. Police was all along there. Everything was a video camera. We saw the drugs in the hands of the girls. Girls, the things were all happening there. After that incident, that area is now free of all that. They all, you know, there is no prostitution taking place in that area. There is, there is no drug taking place in that area. Then, possibly a day later, when I was when I got this hold of that. This has happened and it's an international matter now. Anand Sarma went to, extent, to the extent of go to UN and say that one of my ministers has done this. I'm very sorry on his part. Then I thought of what to do. Then I, the, 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 the local uh, residents, I told them that what is the problem they're facing from the colony? They said, sir, we don't understand their language, they don't understand our language, there is a lot of differences. Then I formed an Indo-African Coordination Committee. You formed it? Yes. That, that very month. Indo-African Coordination Committee. And I called, a com I called a meeting of all those girls, all those boys who are living in and belonging to South Africa or any country for that matter. And locals also I called. So there, those girls got so pleased and they said, and I told them that treat me like a father or brother, and there could be problems in your area, just say it with me. The, what problems do you face in living a dignified life in this, in this colony or in my area? So a lot, a lot of them said something or the other. But they, the trust got built up. And I made the locals speak, they spoke, the South Africans spoke, and they had said a lot of things. So there was a, a good environment generated. For the first time, they were put together. And there, what gentleman was referring to, that they, they were being charged extra rent. They also said this. They all said this. Mm -hmm. Extra rent, uh, they, at times, they get uh, uh, you know, sexually commented. Because not all are into wrong things. Like we Indians, when we go abroad, some Indians do violate laws. So whosoever violate laws, they get punished. But not, not all of us violate laws. We're also, uh, you know, foreigners in some other countries. So the good good people who were there, they were also treated as the same. In fact, I had those complaints which I had received. In that, there was, they, they, because a lot of the Khidki extension of Khidki village, there is a very uh, uh, economical area to live, live in. It's, it's, it's compared, compared to Chanakya Puri or all, all. It's, it's easy to afford a rented accommodation. So, those girls who work in call centers, those uh, journalists who work at uh, late nights in their uh, assignments, so with that time when they were coming to that area, they're all getting comments from the people. There was a huge menace running that from that mall, DLF mall, 
20 rupees was the fixed rate for the auto guy. To, to take you to, from, the, from the mall, they will take you to that place, to the Sai Baba, or the Sai Baba Mandir. Now, all those girls were coming from late night six, just to get the same comments. Well, who knows who is for what? There's nothing written on the face. Who is selling their body, who is not selling their body, who is for what? So I was disturbed. So that, that, that was the action on the part. So when I did this Indo African uh, Coordinates Committee meeting, the one day later, one of my local volunteers got a call from one of the girls. And she wanted to meet her. So meeting was arranged in a nearby park. And then she narrated a story which was so disturbing to me. She said that I'm a, um, I'm a lawyer or some, something, she said. And she said that I have been brought to India uh, in the name of job. And uh, I was forced into prostitution uh, for want of food. And if I do not do all this, then and they, they, they're holding my passport, they not give me passport. Then there was an interview run on CNN and IBN of that girl. Okay. Uh, Rupa Shri is the interviewer. You can go to Google and see the interview. If you see the interview, you'll feel so boiling. Like what the hell is going on? Because a girl is a girl, whether she's from Tibet or from China or from India, from Manipur, whatever. Anybody being forced to prostitution, prostitution for want of food is the least, somebody, I mean, the lowest that the human dignity can go to. So then those girls were uh, rescued by in the same house, the house where I, had, I was pointing my finger to, if you have seen those videos, the police while I was asking that raid to that building. Raid that building. Same buildings he pointed to. These girls were taken to DC Revenue, the Deputy Commissioner Revenue of Delhi Government at that time. Then she called police, DC Revenue, I forget her name. She called the police to record her, record, record their statements and law an FIR. That case started separately. But the pimp who was managing all this, she died recently, uh, six months ago. The girls in the interview have said that no police could help us. No police helped us because police is a hand in gloves. And that pimp is from where? From India. <coughs> oh, and then all this, yeah. this she's is managing that. She's saying, the girls have narrated in their story mm -hmm. that there are people in uh, Uganda, there are people here, they all uh, work together. In fact, I had uh, one of the consulate girls had come to me later that there is a government official who is involved in this, doing all this. So as the minister of the city, of state, I was perturbed, deeply perturbed. I got information that four and a half lakhs of rupees were being paid to the police every month. Okay, for all this. Now, police of Kirki, Malwe Nagar police Malwe station. So, all of this, and what you narrated just now, one is that we need to be, be seeing the symptoms. The symptom: somebody commenting on you, somebody commenting on him, somebody getting sexually exploited, somebody attacking, some, all of this. As a legislator and as a state uh, politician, there are symptoms. What are the root cause? See, we keep curing symptoms here and there. We'll fix that, we'll fix that, we'll fix this, we'll fix this. But what is the root cause? Why do people objectify women? <coughs> or what is happening? What is the... Uh, my lawyer friends are sitting here. We have, we have studied a topic called criminology. Where we, we studied that crime comes out of poverty. Somebody who does not respect his own body, how will he respect your body? If you go to slum areas, if you go to poor areas, what do you find? Are they living a life of dignity? Do they have any value in their lives? What is the value of, value of their 
lives. So then comes that it is a well-known fact. See, South African countries, uh, in fact, in South, even America, have been witnessing this drug trafficking for a long time. And drugs have been a menace all over the world. And South Africa is one of the uh, core countries from where this drug menace operates from. No, that's not true. Could be. <laughs> my knowledge is so. I have. Research on drug trade. My Africa Mexico, is. Mexico is one of them. Africa is one of them. See, uh, I have information that there are buildings in which police can't even enter. Because the drug lords are so powerful, the huge uh, business opportunity, and they all do it. But my uh, exposure to the drug trafficking was only limited to Kirki, not beyond that. So whatever little I could do, but my concern was that anybody living in my constituency has to be given a life of dignity. Nobody could attack anybody sexually, verbally. Nobody could comment on anybody sexually, verbally. For that, I had formed this Indo-African Coordination Committee. And then I, ex I expanded that to cover other countries' people. So what happened to the four girls who were arrested and that night when you raised? Then they were left. They were left. The, uh, the aims thing, because see, I'll tell you. The menace was such, and the business racket was such, that nobody wanted to have this properly probed. So till now, nothing is probed. Now what happened, that once that, that was cooled down, sometime later, an FIR was lost. The girls first approached the police. In fact, they didn't approach the police, but they were made to approach the police. Then they wrote a complaint against, you. against me. On that complaint, police do not act under section 166. Police is supposed to act on every complaint filed by the woman. The woman. So they committed an offense. Then the police fellows took them to Saket court. And it is all recorded. There are evidences. And police drafted a complaint on their behalf, policy drafting. That complaint which was drafted by the police on their behalf has a lot of stories. That Somnath Bharti entered into this house and touched there and touched, they did this and did that. The lawyers on, on affidavits are given. That is the police who was drafting it. Then, same day drafting, same day filing, same day arguments, same day notice. Same day everything, the 22 steps, my lawyer friends would know better, 22 steps were taken on the same day by the court on that complaint. And finally, the judge ordered to, follow, uh, to file an FIR. What was so much hurry? So it was all concerted approach, police, court, because the earning was so huge that, and see, I mean, I'm a very new politician. I'm only two and a half years old. It's a mess. In Indian politics, and that was I'll come to, because you are carrying symptoms. You want to fix that exploitation. You want to fix this uh, exploitation. But who is the person, the way I speak in my, line, my, my uh, speeches? In Hindi, it is said, uh, Boy, bees, baboon ke to aam kahan se khai. Okay. If we are sowing the wrong seed, don't expect mangoes to come out. Now, if you are sending wrong people to the parliament, wrong people to the assembly, look at their lives, the way they live. The local councillor of this area, he started off a small uh, hotel uh, thing. And today he has got 11 buildings in the area. He drives a Mercedes, he drives a Fortuna. For where does he get the money? So is, a, is the politician interested to fix people's problems? The question lies there. Does he have that? At, see, who, with what intention the politician comes to politics? Does he come to fix people's problems? 
or does he come to make money? My, my, what is my duty? I am a member of legislative assembly. I am supposed to legislate laws. I am not supposed to fix this sewer problem, that water problem, and this road problem. This is our municipal works. But am I doing my duty to legislate, my, legislate laws? How many MLAs are even aware that they are supposed to legislate laws? Amend the laws, repeal laws, improve. You know I mean? The sisters talked about uh, there are laws, but then we, can't, we are not enforcing them. Who will enforce them? Who will enforce them? There are uh, Supreme Court uh, directions on the police reforms, Prakash Singh versus UP, State of UP. Who is to it? Supreme Court sent notices after notices to chief secretaries of all the states. That, that we will file a contempt petition, a contempt action against all of you. Nobody bothers. Delhi government was the first government <coughs> which said that all recommendations of, of Supreme Court are going to be put in force. But we are half a state, so we can't do much about it. So my, I'll come to that. Whatever my friends have stated here, they're all symptoms. Objectifying a woman, you used to talk about fair and lovely and all that. So where to start the reform? Should we keep fixing symptoms or should we go to the root cause? Now, I, mean, I mean, you talked about four-year girl raped by somebody. There are four-year girls who have been raped by the father. So we need to be understanding that what is that element which needs to be fixed? Are we going to be... So, two, two things. One is, in the slums, the life standard, the dignity is such low. And when I took over as an MLA of the area, then I, I surveyed my slums. And I said that, can we uh, get jobs to every hand? So if I started mapping them, their needs, and mapping their qualifications, and mapping them to some job, some other job. I succeeded partially. So one thing is that we need to understand they will keep fixing symptoms unless we have parliamentarians or we have legislators who really worry on such issues. I want, because all of you are so much active in social activism. I want good people to come to politics. Politics is not to be the, the subject matter of, uh, you know, untouchability. That no, no, it's a wrong thing. I'm from IIT. I'm a Supreme Court lawyer. I opted to be in politics. All right? I have, I have a very good practice, but I, I, I today it has come down to 10%. So, First thing is that politics should not be something to be not touched. Good people are not coming to politics. It's very difficult to come to politics. I mean, the way I I got you know slapped FIR after FIR after FIR. I've got today six FIRs against me. So it is very difficult path to be, to trade. To be trade more, the path of being good in politics. Okay. Either politics will change you. Or you have to have very thick skin to sustain that pain. So I'm the only politician possible in Delhi who attempted this. I wanted to bring locals and the, you know, you can call refugees, you can call other, other countries, citizens, together. Let's have a working relationship. But unless they understand each other. Is it still operational? Yeah, it was operational. When did you last meet? I keep meeting them off and on. Because Arvind Kejriwal has a committee in your government of Amadi Party in Delhi, of a committee coordination committee of Northeast, and I'm a member. And the last time they met was in June. So I'm coming to that. What I'm saying? Well, please tell your government. No, I'm coming to that. Mm -hmm. See, yes. first of all, this very, in fact, my government at least had a committee on Northeast. Namesake. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying that <laughs> these needs are such which have never been thought of. Mm, exactly. Okay? That is, we need to bring locals and foreigners together. Yes. 
if they have to survive, they have to understand each other only because in in the in the in Hoj Hojrani, which is Muslim dominated area, you can't be uh, you know thinly dressed See, because locals understand this is not good. So culturally, they have to be sens sensitized that look, it is their culture. It is not that wearing thin thin dress or uh, you know dressed up like this. It means something wrong. So Indians' minds or cult locals' minds have to be properly sensitized. Bollywood भी दिखाते तो ठीक है। आप मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ। मैं उसे क्या-क्या कर पे बोलते हैं नाचते हैं। Bollywood तो ठीक है। मैं आपको आपको बता रहा हूँ जहाँ से ground से बता रहा हूँ। So locals के दिमाग में अगर ये चीजें हैं, so they have to put together ऐसे तो इन इनके देश में ऐसा ही होता है भाई। उनको बोलना पड़ेगा कि इन तुम ये मत समझो कि ऐसे कपड़े पहनने से वो खराब हो जाता है अरे नहीं एक कपड़े की बात नहीं डोंट रिएक्ट माइंड सेट की अंडरस्टैंड मी टू दैट वन जस्ट कम टू सो इट इज इन देयर माइंड प्रोग्रामड दैट वन इज ऑब्जेक्ट ऑब्जेक्टिफिकेशन ऑफ वुमेन सेकंड इज द वे यू से फेयर एंड लवली कर लो 7 दिन में गोरा हो जाओ और वो देयर इज आई मीन आई अप्रिशिएट इट द वे आई वाज थिंकिंग दैट यू हैव गॉन मच अहेड एंड पीपल यूजुअली थिंक that is called racial uh, racial affair. Yeah, it is racial. Racial addition. Yeah, so one is that we need to bring locals and foreigners of the area together. Mm -hmm. So because I have sixty seven MLAs yes. of my party. Yes. So I offer for you mm -hmm. that if you want, mm -hmm. you can undertake mm -hmm. an exercise mm -hmm. in which Let's say my my start with my my assembly, Malwa Nagar assembly, constituency. Bring all of them together, and let let there be one homi with among them. Let there be cultural exchanges among them. That they of they they say that my country gives the recipe of my country is like this. So unless they are made to understand each other's cultures. Could be religion, could be <coughs> social pattern of that country and this country and that that community. That there would be violence. Okay. So the best part is make them talk to each other. Today they are living in a in a, in a very uh, you know solitary kind kind of a pattern. They don't know even oh that that Nigerian went. This is so that kind of objectification will end the moment. They yeah. think that they are my like my sisters, mm -hmm. like my daughters. Mm -hmm. so that woman also be, would be somebody's daughter in, of their country. So this relationship has to be built. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I offer you my constituency to start with. Yes. That there are Arjun Nagar, and Krishna Nagar, and Hawaiipur. There are living many uh, northeastern girls, yes. northeastern families. Munirka. Munirka. Now I'm giving my country. My Munirka is not my country. Munirka is not your country. No, that is Arjun. Right, but M ML MP would be the same. MP would be the same, but uh, the councillor is Pramila Tokas. No, she is now MLA. Oh, she is not. So she is your compatriot. Correct. Yeah. So I am offering you to start with this. Mm -hmm. Where all this peripheral thing at least they get taken care of. Yes, yes. And I give a bigger, bigger request also. Yes. That start sending good people to the parliament and the senate. Mm -hmm. People who do not have any interest in going to politics for money. Really, and see, unless you send, I mean, what can you expect of a politician who himself is a offender? True. How? What can you expect of a politician who is who is Nihal Nihal? What is Nihal Chand? In the minister of in the ministry of Modi, that he is he is a rapist. Yes. Huh? The girl the girl is is having a dharna in in a last thaan against him, and here is a minister. He has got an NPW issued against him, <coughs> and police say that I can't find him. He is a minister. Thirty-seven percent of members of parliament has criminal background record. So one is that do not take politics as untouchable affair. Start sending good people. Second is that I offered you MLA, you know, monitoring that one home affair between the local centre partners. Third is, see, every wrong gets originated from the mind. See, there is a there is a picture before me. Or for example, a girl is coming. 
Now somebody develops some wrong notions. But the moment she comes closer and he figures out that she's my sister, that wrong notion goes away. Right? So mind interpreted that figure into a commodity until uh, he, till, till he was, she was her sister, his sister. And this distinction again forgets when he gets, he gets drunk. There are men who get drunk and who commit rape on their daughters and sisters. So this distinction even gets lost there also. <coughs> so question is, what to do and how to do, which would ensure that every human being, or every man, or even, the other day I was reading that one woman had raped one uh, school, a school child. It was in news. Which news was that? I, I saw you in the TV. Some 10 year old <laughs> child was molested by a woman. School teacher. Ah, school teacher. Something like that. Very recently. So it can happen either either way. What I'm saying, sensitization <laughs> of women and men all together, making them believe. Like so when you when you talk of Christianity, it says kingdom of God is within you. You didn't say that you means doesn't mean Christians or Hindus or when you when you refer your own religions. Before we come to religion, can I just bring you back? I'm just coming to that. Uh, before the religion thing comes. I'm just coming to two points. <laughs> okay. okay. So, what are we doing mm. to change the man and change the human being mm. or do some experimentation at the level of minds, at the level of thoughts? Mm. Education. Education. Okay. Now, mm, I don't think in the history there would be any government which would have worked such as us on primary education and primary health care. See, primary education is the key to bring in change in society. The shaping of the mind, the mind is already set up. When you are bringing good secondary education, good college education, now it is just lipa poti. Whatever had to happen has happened in the, till the age of seven. If you do not improve and bring in quality into primary education, it is stupid to believe society would be good. See, with fear of law, you can't do much. There also there is a deficiency use, the way uh, my friend was saying, somebody else also said that police is not, <coughs> now in fact the, the system was there. See, she said that DCP itself asked, Erin see what, what's your name? Dunya, uh, your DCP asked you, but are you Indian? It was additional Some police officer. Now, are you Indian? Why are you helping them? Whatever. I mean, there has to be huge, huge experimentation done at the level of thoughts, 